Hello and welcome to Newsfeed on Trust TV. My name is Doc Asia Kubuzala, bringing you trending stories that people are talking about and sharing around the globe today. Federal government threatens to arrest fake degree holders. FRSC seizes 35 trailers conveying 952 passengers. Man arrested after 14-year-old girl he intended to defile dies in his hotel room. South Africa's parliament speaker resigns over graft probe. Now, top on what's trending, Education Minister Tahir Maman has said that security agencies will soon be directed to go after individuals with fake university certificates in the country. Speaking at the maiden quarterly citizens and stakeholders engagement in Nigeria's education sector in Abuja on Tuesday, April 2nd, Maman assured Nigerians that there would be transformation in the education sector with the unveiling of 13 pillars roadmap. He added that proper planning will be done in the sector, particularly from a basic level as it has become imperative to build a reliable and authentic database that will promote skill acquisition and development and reduce to the nearest minimum the number of out of school children in his words i have no sympathy for such people instead they are part of the criminal chain that should be arrested we are not going to stop at just benin and togo we are going to extend the tragnant to countries like uganda kenya even Niger, here where such institutions have been set up. Now, a netizen said, half of Nigerian politicians will be arrested then, which means it's not possible. Another wrote, amidst hunger and inflation in the land, this is a priority. Another person said, something they should have done since. Now, the Chief of Defense Staff, General Christopher Musa, has said that Okoma community in Ugeli South local government's area of Delta State is still not accessible because the army is conducting a cordon and search. Speaking to newsmen on April 3rd, Musa said the operation is still ongoing and the army wouldn't want people to come in and be shot or mistaken for antagonists. Now, someone said, people will be insulting and disrespecting the military, but when they have an emergency or security issues, they'll be expecting the military to put their lives on the line to protect them. Another said, a private investigator should investigate what happened. Another wrote, thank you, sir. No peace for the wicked, even here on earth. The Interagency Joint Tax Force of the Federal Road Safety Corps has seized 35 trailers carrying a total of 982 passengers along the Abuja Kaduna Expressway in the Bauchi Meduguri area last week. The Corps' Public Education Officer Assistant Corps Marshal Jonas Agu disclosed this in a statement on Thursday. The statement revealed that the operation was a strategy to combat trailer related accidents and the practice of transporting people in trailers. Take a look. Now someone said, ask them for valid documents. They are not Nigerians. Another said, that's how bandits move. They don't move with weapons. Weapons are already in their hidden places. Another wrote, but transportation is costly now, and I think they took this because it's cheaper. Now, the federal government has reportedly approved power companies' move to raise electricity prices to 200 naira per kilowatt to an hour for 68 naira for urban consumers this month. News agency reported that these customers represent 15% of the population that the government says consume 40% of the nation's electricity. The report added Nigerians now have to pay $2.42 per 1 million British thermal units from the previous rate of $2.1. $1.8 metric million British thermal units. Power firms aren't allowed to charge enough to recover the cost of distributing electricity, with the government paying the difference as a subsidy to companies in the sector. The government has in the past said that electricity companies are short of an estimated 2 trillion naira in capital and need new investors to revive the industry. Now, this is coming after the Nigerian mainstream and downstream petroleum regulatory authority announced an increase in the price of natural gas, which is used to generate more than 70% of electricity in Nigeria. Nigeria. Now, a netizen said, my own is just bring the light and charge any amount you want. Another said, time will come when everyone will have solar and then Nigeria Power Holding Company would fold like water but mark it somewhere. Another wrote, no break for being a Nigerian from frying pan to hotter and more intense fire. Well, let's keep praying for a better Nigeria. 
Now, next one was trending. In a bid to secure the release of the embattled leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Namdikanu, the Ohanese Ndibo has unveiled plans to engage in peace talks with influential figures across Nigeria. The pan Igbo social political group said it aims to advocate for forgiveness and cooperation towards Kanu's freedom. In a statement released on Thursday, the Secretary General of Ohanese Ndibo, Okechuku Isiguzoro, revealed the group's intention to hold meetings with key stakeholders, including the Oba of Lagos, Rilwan Aikiolu, the Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Sahad Abubakar III, and Asiri Dokubo. Now a netizen said, talks with Lagos monarch for Kanu's release is an insult to the entire Igbo community. It's monarchs, so-called Ohanese, the governors and all political appointees. This is a clear show that we have no right of our own in this country. Another alleged, this same Lagos he asked his boys to burn down inciting them on his radio. Another person said, if Oba Rewan should dare help this man, may he be thrown out of the palace. First, it was Princess Banke, now it's Oba Rewan. I can see these indigenous Lagosians are undercover IPOP too. Now let's take a short break and when we come back, you get to know why you should be careful with things you post on social media. Stay tuned. Welcome back. It's Newsfeed. Now, the Commissioner of Police, Bielsa State Command, CP, Alonye Nu Francis Idu, has ordered a discreet investigation into the circumstances leading to the death of a 14-year-old girl identified as Shalom Ebitare in a hotel in Yenagua. A statement released by the command spokesperson, ASP Musa Muhammad, says while acting on credible intelligence, operators of a Bielsa State Police Command apprehended a suspect in connection with the suspected murder. The suspect identified as Loki Okubo, aged 17 years, who was arrested by police operatives attached to a Keki Division police headquarters, told the police that he took the deceased to a hotel where he intended to have carnal knowledge of her. The suspect claimed that the deceased went to the bathroom to take her bath, but fell, in which she sustained injury. Sequel to this, he invited the hotel manager who assisted in taking the deceased to FMC Yenogua, where she was confirmed dead by a medical doctor on duty. Meanwhile, the suspect is in the custody at the SCID Yenogua, while investigation continues with a view to ascertain the cause of the death. Now, someone said, one kind of hotel gives room to minors under 18 years. 17 years old boy and 14 years old girl they should first close the hotel because they don't know their work another said 14 years and 17 years you two should be in school or do something useful with your time and life bathroom fall is usually fatal wages of sin is what again another opined hotels that allow minors into their premises for indecent purposes are part of the problem from going after a minor to death and the Chief Magistrate Court, who says on two, has summoned five social media users for criminal defamation of the reputation of gospel singer Messi Chinwo and her husband, Blessed Uzo Chikwa. In the court summons dated April 3, 2024, cited by newsmen, Chief Magistrate Emmanuel Iyana ordered the five defendants to appear in person before the court on April 23 to answer the charges leveled against the complainants. The complainants in the matter are Blessed Uzo Chikwa and Mercy Chinwo, while the five defendants are Okoronko, EJK, Kingsley Ibe, DJ Spalt Kid, Terence Eckhart and Samuel Agozi. The suit stemmed from posts made by the defendants last week after the gospel singer and her husband posted a picture of their son on Instagram. After the picture of the baby who was born in 2023 was posted, a defendant alleged that there was a resemblance between the baby and another gospel singer, Nathaniel Bassi, and claimed that he was the father, an allegation that went viral. Now, someone said, they must not drop the case. No apology should be accepted now and in future. Another said, even sweeter, you people need to learn social media decorum the hard way. Another opined, see what data of 100 Naira put them into. Now they will learn the hard way. And now on the foreign scene, South Africa's parliament speaker resigned on Wednesday, weeks after her home was raided in a graft probe likely to hurt the ruling African National Congress heading into May elections. In a resignation letter seen by AFP, Noziviwe Mapisa Ngakula said she decided to step down with immediate effect to uphold the integrity of parliament and focus on the investigation against her. Mapisa Ngakula is accused of soliciting hefty amounts 
of bribes from a former military contractor during her previous tenure as defense minister. She denies the allegations. Coming just under two months before national elections, the case has added to the woes of the ANC, which is struggling in the polls, a mere weak economy, and accusations of graft and mismanagement. In power since the advent of democracy in 1994, the party is expected to see its share of the vote drop below 50% for the first time in May, potentially forcing it to form a coalition to remain in power. The ANC praised Mapisa and Gakula for protecting his reputation by stepping aside before being asked to do so. Now someone alleged, in Nigeria, we not only worship them, we even reward them for committing same offenses. Another also alleged, in one country, Senate President parted almost 4 trillion local currency and the senators expelled the person and raised the alarm. Shame. Another wrote, Nigerian politicians should learn from these and have the same mentality. And now in sport, hat-trick Hilo Cole Palmer scored twice deep into stoppage time on Thursday as Chelsea's turned Manchester United 4-3, all but ending United hope of qualifying for next season's Champions League. Eric Ten Hag's men appeared set for a famous victory after storming back from 2-0 down to lead 3-2 to two in a staggering game containing a combined 47 shots. But Palmer had the last word leveling from the penalty spot in the 100 minutes and then netting the winner moments later. Defeat for United leaves them 11 points off fourth place, Aston Villa, with just eight games to play and facing the season outside Europe's elite club competition. Now someone said, Always remember that Manchester United is the only team that can come back and go back. Another said, my heroes, y'all really saved me from heart attack. Another opined, I will never betray my club, up blues. Well, congratulations to Chelsea. Now onto a typical example of I am tired, but food is life. Take a look. Well, food is indeed life. And that's all we have for you today on Newsfeed. Follow us and subscribe to all our social media platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and X. Until next time, goodbye.